Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. Usually on my channel I do Star Wars news, theories and speculation, but today we're going to be doing something very different. I'm going to be explaining why this scene from Attack of the Clones is not only my favourite from the prequels, but the most underrated scene in all of Star Wars. Ever since I first started my channel, a question I've been getting over and over again is what is my favourite scene? Well here is an entire video essay explaining it. I'm very aware of the fact that this scene is pretty controversial and probably the last scene you'd expect me to choose. But in this video I'm going to be breaking down why this scene is so significant for the Skywalker saga and why it deserves more praise. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. The sequence of scenes which is referred to as the return to Tatooine in episode 2 is such a decisive moment in Anakin's journey and eventual fall to the dark side. I so often see people credit Revenge of the Sith for being the movie where we first see Vader manifest, but if you really pay attention it's in Attack of the Clones where his faith in the Jedi Order begins to decline. I'm going to go through the key scenes leading up to the main one that is the subject of today's video. I really want to set the scene correctly so grab your favourite beverage and let's begin. At the 1 hour 3 minute and 55 second mark of Attack of the Clones, Anakin arrives on Tatooine. He's been having dreams of his mother in danger and knows that he has to go save her. He is very aware that doing so is breaking his mandate to protect Padme, but along with R2-D2 she goes with him. On Tatooine, the first person he visits for information is Watto, the despicable Toydarian who owned Annie and his mother years ago. As we see later on in the timeline in Jedi vs Sith, Vader would end up slaughtering Watto and despising the Toydarians on the whole, branding them as disgusting vermin in the galaxy. Watto reveals that he sold Anakin's mother to a moisture farmer and when we cut to the last homestead, Anakin and Padme are greeted by 3PO, who's not seen Anakin in years. When Anakin inquires about his mother, the tone is sombre, as 3PO utters the line, I think perhaps we should go inside. Anakin meets Clyde, the man who married Shmi, and when he tells Annie about the Tusken Raiders, the young Jedi embarks instantly to go and save his mother. And then we get that emotional shot of Anakin practically in tears and rage on a speeder, glazing along the rocky horizon of Tatooine's desert as the night draws near. In a remote wasteland valley on Tatooine, Anakin spies on the oasis camp of the Tusken Raider tribe. Now this is where things really start to pick up. He finds his mother in a hut, and while he keeps the promise that he made her in the Phantom Menace, he's too late as the torture that she underwent from the Tuscans was too much. Shmi dies in Anakin's arms and he looks up filled with anger and rage as he leaves the hut and slashes the other Tuscans to death. And not just the men, but the women and the children too. Something extremely powerful in this scene is that we hear Qui-Gon's voice screaming Anakin, no. I will spend more time talking about this a little bit later, but Hayden Christensen was absolutely phenomenal throughout these scenes. The next scene is one that is immensely powerful. Anakin returns to the Lars homestead, carrying his mother's body in a bag. The sheer emotion on his face speaks louder than any words could. He is broken, angry and feels betrayed, because in that moment he thinks to himself, that this was all the doing of the Jedi. He didn't just blame the Tuscans, but the way that the Jedi indoctrinated him. The ones who always dismissed him and told him to be mindful of his feelings, to not dwell on thoughts of his mother. But look where that led. Anakin was a fractured soul. The only good he ever knew in his life was Qui-Gon who died before he could even train Anakin, Padme and of course his mother, Shmi. So with all of that out of the way, we finally come to the main scene that this video is about. This scene has become a meme in and of itself, but this video aims to shed a new light on it. I want to break down the words that Anakin is actually saying and why they're so important in foreshadowing the dark side within him. After a little back and forth, Padme says, sometimes there are things that no one can fix. You're not all powerful, Annie. Anakin replies, Well, I should be. Someday I will be. I will be the most powerful Jedi ever. I promise you, I will even learn to stop people from dying. It's all Obi-Wan's fault. He's jealous. He's holding me back. Let's start with the first part of this speech. Anakin wanting to be so powerful that he can prevent death is of course a big red flag that he's tapping into the dark side through his rage. But if we dig beneath the surface, the way that Anakin is expressing himself is a great example of a vocal expulsive that gives insight into his psyche. He is expressing deep pain through a desperate attempt to control, something which as Darth Vader, he would do a lot of. His controlling behaviour, or rather his want to control, is a coping mechanism to combat his sadness and rise above it 
to crush it. His desire to prevent death is just a way for him to never feel this kind of pain ever again. Moving on to what he says next, he explains that the Tuscans are like animals and he slaughtered them like animals. They're like animals and I slaughtered them like animals. I hate them. The way in which Hayden Christensen says those three very simple words is what makes this scene what it is. It's the most Vader we see in Anakin before he fully turns to the dark side in episode 3. Just raw anger and hatred. Padme then tells him that to be angry is to be human, to which Anakin replies, I'm a Jedi. I know I'm better than this. This is another really telling line, and one in which exposes the Jedi for what they really were. I'm not the first to mention this, but it's no secret that the Jedi were manipulative and arrogant. They were indoctrinated from a young age to suppress their feelings and natural emotions. Love, fear, overwhelming joy, and most other things they would label as distractions were forbidden. This is what ultimately led Anakin down the path to destruction, because while the Jedi Masters were telling him things like to not dwell on his mother, he was dying inside, conflicted between his teachings and human nature. When Padme tells him that to be angry is to be human, and he replies with I'm a Jedi, it's simply because he's been indoctrinated to shun himself for giving into those natural feelings. While all of this was happening, he was being groomed by Palpatine from a very young stage, and to be honest, once Qui-Gon died, Palpatine was the only person who acted as a father figure to Anakin. Notice that I don't even mention Obi-Wan, and I'll talk about this in a separate video. As George Lucas always said, the story of Anakin Skywalker is one of tragedy, and this scene is where it all kicked off in his head. It's such an underrated scene, but should really be credited as the first sign of his turn to the dark side. The part of this scene that makes me cry every time I see it is when he falls to his knees and says, I wasn't strong enough to save you, mum, but I promise I won't fail again. I miss you. So much. I find this so powerful because it's not just sadness that we hear through his words and expressions, it's also his brokenness. Anakin was fundamentally broken, and as someone who lost a parent in my young adult years, I can deeply sympathise with mixed emotions that are fundamentally rooted in a profound sense of loss. Now, I promised that I would talk a little bit about Hayden Christensen and his role in this movie. Around the time that the prequels came out, and even to this day, people give him so much flack for his portrayal of Anakin. But I share the view that many other prequels fans have, in that he was absolutely perfect in the role. Critics always say that he was robotic and emotionless, but they miss the point that that is exactly what Anakin was supposed to be. Just think about it for a minute. He was raised in poverty as a slave. He was then taken from his mother to be trained in the ways of the Jedi. His mentor, who actually believed in him and would have made a great father figure, died before Anakin's training could even begin. He was vulnerable and alone, and all he was told was to repress his true feelings. And even after doing that and doing everything right, he was denied the rank of master, distrusted by two highest members of the Jedi Council, and left to run right into the arms of the only person who he looked up to. And that man ended up being one of the most evil Sith Lords that the galaxy has ever known. Anakin's fall is truly tragic in the prequels, because we went into the trilogy knowing exactly what the outcome was going to be. And we all saw it unfold in front of our eyes, almost in slow motion, and yet, it was preventable at every turn. This scene is so significant because it's the loss of his mother that would mark the start of the downward spiral that would turn him into the Dark Lord of the Sith that he became. And deep down inside, behind the mask, behind the cruelty and oppression, there was still that scared, broken slave boy from Tatooine.